Hey there, uh, this is a useless video on how to use my program to convert uh, an XPS model to PMX, which will be compatible with Miku Miku Dance. Uh, before we get started, it's worth noting that uh, this is not a end-all be-all solution to get your models into Miku Miku Dance. Often I get uh, messages about people saying that the, the models are not animation perfect. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's just a, a basic conversion from one format to the other, and it still does require refinement. Um, notably, the PMX editor is uh, most common to uh, be used to refine these models, because um, it has a lot of data associated with it, physics data, for example, uh, which is best configured in the editor. However, Blender uh, is uh, got plug-in support for the PMX format. Um, I'm not sure how advanced the plugin is, but it can also be used to help configure data uh, for your your models to be animated. All right, so let's get started. Um, this is what you're going to be downloading. It's a zip file. You can extract the zip file by right-clicking on it. Windows includes a extract dialog. Okay, you can click on that, and you'll get this uh, wizard. Okay, typically you just hit extract and then finish, and it will create a folder alongside the zip file. So inside this folder, you'll have the application here. Uh, it has also configuration files, um, which just assist with settings with the application. So you're just going to just click on the executable. So you're going to double click. It's going to open up the dialog. Uh, I know there are a lot of features here, or options rather, uh, that can be a little bit daunting at first. Uh, the uh, the good news is most often most often you won't have to touch these at all, so these can be ignored. The only thing you're going to change is the file input and then the the button here you're going to press to start the conversion. Okay, so let's find a model file first to convert with. Uh, so I have copied this. Uh, this was sent to me by uh, somebody on DeviantArt. I just picked it by random. Um, inside here we have textures and our model file. Okay, so I'm going to open this in the converter. So I'm going to open, and then we have to navigate uh, to the directory, um, and then we have our model file right here. Um, this is going to filter naturally by the supported file types. Okay, so we have a lot of files in here, but they're going to be filtered. Uh, we have .mesh and .ascii. Okay, uh, the formats are a little bit eh, in terms of compatibility. Um, for some reason, uh, updates are still being made to these formats, even though they're, I think they're like over a decade old. Uh, but occasionally an update comes out, which will break compatibility. If that happens, if a file doesn't open for you or convert for you, uh, please contact me and give me a link where I can get access to that model so I can examine it and I'll get back to you when I can. Anyway, I'm going to open up the dot .mesh. Um, essentially, the hierarchy that you should be uh, you know, picking your files in is if you have a dot .mesh, pick that one. If that doesn't work, try the dot .ascii. If that one doesn't work, try the dot .xps. Okay? Um, Actually, for a while, XPS actually just called them .mesh, so actually the .ascii is sometimes the .mesh. It's confusing. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to try with the .mesh first and see if that works. So I'm going to click Open, and it's going to just paste that uh, full path in the dialog at the top here. And we hit Convert. Wow! Right on. Uh, this dialog is just to make it very clear to everybody that uh, the file was converted successfully. Um, I had initially complaints. Uh, when people said, uh, you know, I press convert, nothing happened. Um, when the model gets converted, I, I didn't think it was necessary to have anything happen. So this dialog is to make it very clear to everybody that, yes, your file was converted. Um, it tells you exactly where it was converted, because the second question I get is, where did the model go? Um, this is a simple behavior. Basically, wherever the file was opened from, the folder, is where that file will be written to. So you can see here we have the file that we opened and the file was written directly to that same folder next to the input file. So your output is next to your input. Very simple concept. Uh, but if it wasn't clear enough... Wow! wow. Look, that's, that's the path that the file was written, just in case you were wondering. Okay, um, That's it. That is the converter. There's not much to it. Um, that is the tutorial. That's the guide. You just open a file and hit convert. There's not much to it. Uh, there are some advanced features. Um, I will show you one feature, and that is the bone renamer. I'm going to show you this uh, file first before we do that. I'm going to open it up in the PMX editor. Um, we're going to look at the bone names. The bone names are used for animation, um, and the animations are created off the bones, uh, which are referenced by its name. 
So during uh, in this tab here, we'll see that uh, this XPS model had English names. Okay, uh, these are standard XPS names. They have a particular naming convention that uh, uh, the community tries to stick to. Okay, now we're going to convert this with the bone renamer. Wow. All right, now we're going to open this up in the PMX editor, and we'll see that the bone names were renamed. Uh, this makes it more compatible with animations, and I'll show you how that works in uh, Make Amigo Dance after this. So this is the same model, uh, but the bones are now renamed, and they now have Japanese naming conventions, which should make it uh, uh, more compatible with uh, the animation files that are saved by the Make Amigo Dance community. Okay, so let me open up uh, quickly Make Amigo Dance, and we'll load that up. I'll have a look at that file. Just open up our model. Wait, yeah, what am I doing? It's right here. <laughs> All right, we're just going to click that prompt, and there's our model. Okay, these uh, orange uh, bones through our legs, these are uh, inverse kinetics. Uh, so those operate differently. You have to grab the goal. Okay, uh, but we're going to load an animation file and see how that works. We're going to go load animation. I just downloaded this motion off of DeviantArt today. I don't really know, you know much about it. It's just telling you that it's going to link the animation to the names of the bone. Okay. And then if it works, we'll see that the character pose changed a little bit. And we can hit play. All right. Now, it won't work perfectly. There's a lot of things that need to be factored in. Uh, basically, bone limitations, limits. Um, the initial pose of the character has to be matching the uh, idle, idle pose. So uh, this is Ashley Graham from Resident Evil 4. So Ashley is actually imported in a T pose, and she needs to be imported in an A pose. Uh, so her arms are pointing down, but uh, because she was on a T pose, they're pointing outwards in an A pose. So there's a lot of problems here. This just gets it kind of in a working state to start from. Uh, but there's, of course, more steps that need to be taken in an editor to get it uh, more functional, okay? But anyway, that's what the uh, the bone renamer does. Uh, it gets it to a more functional state for you. Uh, this is all hinging, though, on the fact that the names are in a, a certain naming convention. So if they're not, uh, this won't work, okay? If you click this button here, open table, you'll get a text file. And the text file is a uh, bone renaming template. So I'll just find the actually a lower section. So what I usually do is I take a list of names, and these are the Japanese names that are used for uh, their animations, and I paste them all down here. Okay. And then what I do is I I, uh, I go tab. So I just basically how this works is uh, JPN name tab the English name. What the heck am I doing? English name. And so it's what they say, tab delimited. So it's separated by a tab. It's very important that you put a tab there. Um, and so, yeah. So what I do is I paste all the Japanese names down here. I go through my uh, PMX editor. I look at the English names. And I try, to, I try to associate them to the correct name in the list as best I can. That becomes my template. And then my converter, when you enable Bone Renamer, will come in here. We'll look for this English and replace it with this other name, typically in Japanese. Okay, that's how this works. So in my file, I have multiple templates. I have one that I made up for Final Fantasy VII Remake, King of Fighters All Stars, um, Soul Calibur II, and it just goes on. Um, also, the semicolon here denotes a, a line that is skipped. So if you want to add comments, in mine, I added comments every time I added a new template, basically. However, you should not do this this way because it can uh, get confusing. Uh, if there is uh, an English name for one game that goes to a different Japanese name, then you can have kind of a confliction. So you, can only, you should only do one at a time. So the uh, release that I um, upload, uh, I usually delete this from the template. You guys only get the XNA lore one. They only get that template so that you can make your own uh, if you wanted to. So that's how that works, uh, basically. And uh, then we have some more features here. They are not so significant. Uh, I will make a second video discussing that and a more detailed video discussing those features. 
they're really not that useful to be honest. Uh, they're just added every time I had a personal problem with a project that I needed to get solved. I just added into the interface myself. Um, but they may help you guys, so I will put that in a second video that will be linked in the description below and you get more information on that uh, there. Uh, so that's the converter. Okay. Um, again, if you have any issues, you can uh, send me a note on DeviantArt and I will try to get to it uh, in uh, uh, when I have time. Uh, just make sure if it is a problem with a model uh, to send me the model. A lot of people say, oh, this is not working, whatever. Uh, well, I, I really need do need to reproduce the error. So if you have the model, uh, you, please upload it to you know Mediafire or something, or even on your DeviantArt stash. Link me to it so I can examine the model. If it's a, if it's linked somewhere, just send me the link. That's the easiest thing. All right, thanks for watching. Take care and have fun. Later, guys.